Hello, I'm Rick Schultz from Virtual Dynamics. We're here to talk to you about EMI, what exactly it is and how we can prevent against it. EMI is a very strange animal. The reason being is that it is a field, it is a, uh, a type of, of energy that we can't really see. We can observe it, but you can't actually see the lines of electromagnetic field. So what is it that an electromagnetic field actually does, and, and how does it impact your audio system? Well, we wanted to show you today just some of the things that electromagnetic field will do and how we can prevent it against having the effects of electromagnetic field um, rob you of good quality audio. So here we've got a transformer inside of a soldering gun, and when we activate this transformer, the transformer has a ferrous core. When the uh, magnet sits against it, it will stick a little bit, but you can see that it sits on there quite nicely. When we take that same thing and we activate this transformer, you can see the effect of that magnet against the actual transformer itself. We got a pretty good spin on that one. Now, <clears throat> what we're doing here with that little demo was to show you the effect of a magnetic field. A magnetic field in a transformer is always inversing and it throws off an incredible amount of electromagnetic interference. That's the kind of thing that we're aiming at as an audiophile. Those are the problems that we actually have. So it's not from an outside interference that we're actually trying to protect against electromagnetic fields. It's not from something that's coming from the neighbor's house or something that's coming from um, the, the sun, although those, those things can slightly impact, impact the, the sonics of an audio system. It's what happens inside the system that actually makes the greatest amount of effect. Of course, because we've got transformers mounted right inside the box. Now the transformers are not the only thing that give out electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic field actually comes from everywhere that electricity is flowing. When electrical energy moves, it creates a magnetic field. Of course, you can increase the power of that magnetic field by winding the copper in different ways or winding the, the electrical field in different ways, but it's always present. And that's the thing that I think that um, we really need to show you today. <coughs> when electricity moves through this wire, it's actually creating a magnetic field. That's also true when it's moving through any of the internal parts of this preamplifier. So everything in here is always creating, as electricity moves through it, including these trace leads, an electromagnetic field. Those electromagnetic fields are just like a couple of permanent magnets. They react with each other in some way. So you can see here that when you put um, two magnetic fields beside each other, they want to do something. They want to stick together or they want to repel one or the other. So how do we protect this board? Now, when we talk about this inside here, we have to remember that the magnetic fields are going to actually impede the flow of electrical energy um, or cause it to be able to run uh, differently than what we want. We want it to be able to just be free, the electricity to be able to move naturally um, without any impedance or resistance whatsoever on it. And magnetic fields um, stop that from happening. So we're going to show you next a little demonstration of what they call a Faraday field. Now, first of all, before we do that, I want to show you this little guy here. It's just a hollow copper rod. When we put a magnet through the copper rod, we can see that the magnet doesn't just drop right through. It becomes suspended, in part, by the copper rod. Now, we'll just take something a little bit different, like this drill bit, and we'll drop it through. And of course, the response is quite different. Why? Well, what happens is the electro as the magnet goes through here, it's actually creating that thing that we call electromagnetic interference. It is electrically charging this copper rod, and the copper rod, once electrically charged, is going to send out its own magnetic field. That magnetic field that's present wherever electricity is, is taking and stopping or creating a resistance to the flow of this magnet moving through it. So, it's a bit of a clue or a hint as how we can properly shield a cable away from electromagnetic interference. 
One of the traditional ways that we've always used to be able to protect against magnetic fields is to block the magnetic field with something that will control the magnetic field. Now, when you look at traditionally most high-end audio cables, they're usually covered with something like a plastic or paper um, or plastic and paper and, and even rubber um, can be used to be able to protect against the flow of electrical energy coming out of the conductor. But does it do anything to electromagnetic fields? And the answer is no. The only thing it does is it creates a bit of a distance between that and the next conductor beside it. And that distance will eliminate a little bit of the crosstalk. Of course, if we didn't have that, we'd also have a short. So what happens when we take a rubber-coated magnet and we put it down that copper pipe? It should flow right through like the drill bit did, but it didn't. It flows right through like the other unprotected magnet did. Now, just because these ones are a little bit too thick to, to uh, go through there, um, we're going to be doing this. We're going to take that magnet, we're going to push it into what's called a Faraday cage. And although we're not going to use that particular magnet, we're going to use this guy over here. It's a smaller magnet. I have two of them. One with no shield on it whatsoever, and one with a, with a Faraday cage. Now this is Faraday cage is a little bit short, but it will still work. Let's drop the first one through. I'll put my Faraday cage one to the side, and we'll drop the first one through. So it takes a little bit of time. The larger the magnet, the fast or the slower it's going to drop through. This one here has got the Faraday cage on it. Let's see how it drops. And it drops almost straight through. Not quite like the drill bit because some of its energy is still present. You can see that when I put the screwdriver beside it, the first thing that wants to stick always is not where the Faraday cage is because that's where the magnetic field is restricted, but right to the end of it.